Morning all. All right, so we're going to start things out today looking at the Boston Bruins. And the Boston Bruins coming off of an absolutely insane regular season that had a much different finish in the postseason than many had envisioned. Uh, the Boston Bruins, 2019, they got all the way to the final. They were one game away from a Stanley Cup. St. Louis rightfully won that one. And rightfully meaning that, yeah, they, they won it. I didn't think there was skullduggery there. And so Boston's an interesting team in that they haven't missed the playoffs since 2016. And they've produced points at a rate of 100 points or more. Uh, and I mean at a rate because there was the 2020-2021 season where it was just 56 games, but they had like 75 points. So six seasons in a row, they've been at a pace of 100 points or more. And it really is crazy how good they've been for this long. This could be the year where things start to fall apart a little bit. Um, and I say a little bit because I think this team will still stay in games. If they can keep the puck out of their net, they're going to be tough to beat. But scoring goals could become a problem for Boston this year. Uh, their cap space, $6,204,166. So cap space looks good. However, uh, restricted free agents, Trent Frederick, probably one and a half to two million, I would think, for Frederick. Uh, Swayman, probably two to two and a half million, unless they go with a long term deal. But. Swayman's going to uh, do arbitration, so that'll get straightened out probably today because I'm doing this video now. Might even be fixed by the time this gets uploaded. But the other thing with Boston that's going to be fun this year as a distraction if the team's not as good on the ice is that it's the centennial season. So I'm anxious to see what they do with the centennial season. Do they have throwback jerseys they wear for warm-ups? Uh, do they have, because they have theme nights that will go through the NHL team's history uh, 100 years, long time, and the Boston Bruins uh, rightfully celebrating that, but it, it may not be as much of a celebration on the ice. We may not see the amount of goalie hugs this year we saw last year. In fact, I'd go out on a limb and say they are not winning 65 games this year. So you look at this forward group, and the first thing is, and again, lines are subject to change and all that, but just the fact that Marshawn and Pasternak, you know, you've got on either side, that's, that's a win, right? Marshawn still a point-per-game player. Pasternak can score you 60 goals a year. Absolutely one of the best, if not the best, goal scorer in the NHL right now. There are others that can be argued. We can have that discussion another time. But it's down the middle that the question gets asked of, okay, so is Pavel Zaka a number one center? I, I, I don't think so. He hasn't had that opportunity. Maybe he does well with this opportunity. Uh, but then you got Coyle behind him. I don't see Coyle as a number one center. Morgan Geeky comes in from Seattle. Same. Uh, Geeky's a depth center. Uh, Patrick Brown added as a free agent. Oscar Steen, better as a depth player. Uh, McLaughlin re-signed. Again, depth center there. John Beecher may very well end up someday being a Boston center. That, that I, I think with Beecher, the, the upside is probably third line. So they really do lose out without Krejci and without Bergeron. This That's a huge loss for Boston. And unlike this past season where they had injury problems and they just had to get through those injuries, this time, in all likelihood, Bergeron and Krejci probably aren't coming back. Bergeron is not confirmed he's retired, but from that tearful goodbye he gave at the end of the playoffs, I would say he's leaning towards retirement. Uh, then we get through the rest of the, the the wingers here. You got Van Riemsdyk, who was added from Philadelphia on a one-year deal. Uh, Greer, Lucic, does either of them get third-line minutes? Lucic is best served right now being on the fourth line. But is A.J. Greer a third-liner? I would say probably not. So if the third line is Greer, Geeky, and Frederick, I mean, they're going to work hard. But are they going to be able to score any goals? The bottom six, if they can't score goals for you, if you don't get any offense from them, it becomes tough to win in this league. Uh, then you got uh, Jason Magna. So the other Magna, I think Jacob Magna I've already talked about. So we still have two Magna brothers that are NHL slash AHL level. Um, Merkulov is there and Toporowski. So it honestly, the, the depth with the Bruins right now, it's kind of shocking how much of a difference a year can make. Uh, then on the right-hand side, you have DeBrusque. DeBrusque is a UFA next year. So they have to keep DeBrusque and get him to sign on long-term. Uh, Trent Frederick, Jacob Lauko. I like Lauko a lot. But again, where they need help is down the middle. Uh, Anthony Richard's been added. And LaSalle is there now. LaSalle might end up being a good goal scorer. But again, they need help down the middle, right? This is Boston's issue right now is looking at that, that center spot. 
it, it's not inspiring a lot of confidence in me as a Bruins fan that this is a team that could win their division. Will they be in the mix? Absolutely. Uh, they proved this past season that when they're shorthanded, they're very well coached. This is a team that they rally around one another. There's a very good locker room there. Uh, but how many games they win, it, it's going to have to drop. I, I would kind of be, if they win 50, I'd be surprised. Because again, center depth is everything in the NHL. On the blue line, Grizzlick, he's on an expiring contract. Uh, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo. That is a solid top four. There are some in Bruins fandom who aren't big fans of Grizzlicks, which is fine. Uh, but honestly, I think that's a solid top four. You got Forbert. He's on an expiring contract. Shattenkirk's been added. Also a one-year contract. Sporil is a UFA next summer um, and still hasn't established himself as a top six defenseman in the NHL. Uh, Ian Mitchell picked up from Chicago as well as Regula. Uh, Regula is going to be a depth defenseman. Maybe Mitchell gets into top six minutes. If he does, it might be at the expense of Shattenkirk. We'll see. Watherspoon is there. And Renouf is on an expiring deal as well. And then you get into the goaltending. I don't think anybody expects Linus Olmark to repeat what he did last year. I don't think anybody expects that. Olmark had an absolutely remarkable season from start to finish. Now, if he can repeat what he did last year, might have yourself a pretty darn good team for Boston, and we might be talking about Olmark with back-to-back -back business. But I think the odds of that, when you look at, at his body of work over his career, I think he had a great career year. It was really great to watch. And then, of course, going into the playoffs, it seemed like he was hurt in the playoffs. I didn't think his mobility was there. So whether he was just exhausted from all the games he'd played or he was dealing with an injury, at any rate, the goaltending clearly favored Florida from Game 5 on. Uh, Swayman, as I've mentioned, RFA, probably signs a bridge deal, probably signs that before this video gets uploaded. I like Swayman. I have a Swayman jersey. I, I absolutely am willing to put my money where my mouth is, and I believe that Swayman's going to be a starter for the Boston Bruins. Whether or not he ends up being a top 10 goaltender, we'll see. Uh, they've got Kaiser in the minors. They've got DiPietro. That's Michael DiPietro, former Vancouver Canucks prospect who has had his struggles since arriving in the Boston organization as well. Di Pietro, it's a real shame. Um, you know, he his, his development just got set back a few years ago, and he was never able to get it back to where you'd want it to be. So maybe this is the year Di Pietro gets it together. Maybe he has a good year in Providence, but he's, he's not high up on their list of goaltenders at this point. The Boston Bruins, I still think, are going to probably be a playoff team. And I'm saying probably because after the season they had last year, I'd be surprised if they weren't. But they have to do something about that depth down the middle. They have to find something. The problem is they don't have a lot of cap space to do it. And most of the teams I would think they would want to make deals with, probably dealing with cap space issues as well. So maybe Bergeron comes back, signs another team-friendly deal for like $2 million. If you add Bergeron to the center group here, and Zaka drops to number two, Coyle drops to number three, Geeky drops to number four, that's good. Uh, that's, that's the amount of a difference that I think Bergeron would make. He may not score the way he did a few years ago, but he still provides that leadership. He's still one of the best two-way forwards in the game, if not the best defensive forward in the game. So... It, it really may very well hinge on Bergeron. If Bergeron says, yeah, I'll come back for one more year, Boston could be in the mix to win the division. Without Bergeron and looking at that center depth, it, it's going to be tough. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.